This is Twit. Tell us what's new in the 845, Donna. What, where the, it's a new kind of a new focus, it sounds like, for you guys. Yeah, I mean, look, it, one of the things that we always do with our premium tier platforms is we obviously look at trends and technology and where they're heading. Um, and we, we try to do is enhance from an, not only from an experiential level, but from a technology perspective, those parts of our platform that we need that we have that actually have to be enhanced in order to deliver what the ecosystem wants. And so the areas of focus for 845 are really around a couple of different things. One is AI um, and the AI and machine learning capabilities of our platform, as well as immersion. Uh, deeper immersion and all, some of that comes from the camera and the visual processing, but some other things, um, uh, uh, which are kind of new focus areas while maintaining our constant focus on power efficiency and thermals, industry leading connectivity, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you saw, if you saw Keith's presentation this morning, or if you saw the press kit and the, and the, and the release that went out, really immersion and AI are sort of the two pillars that we talked a lot about today and that we introduced whole new architectures um, on the onto the platform to deliver um, on uh, more for AI and and more immersion. Um, so those are the two main areas. And we can talk about them specifically or I can you know I can talk, talk to you about AI versus immersion and and uh, whatever you guys want to want to know more about. I'm happy to to address a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not, not sure, sure if the event went, I know it wasn't streamed, right? So I don't know if people can, yeah, so I'm not sure if they'll make it, or if you'll make it available uh, later, I guess you will. Okay, so people will be able to go and see it. It's worth watching because there's a bunch of stuff there. But like you said, you know, the AI stuff is, you know, bringing the AI down to the, what Microsoft would probably call the intelligent edge or the, you know, the last mm -hmm. connected device, right, for low latency and that kind of thing. Um, super important for lots of things on the phone. But to me, like the, uh, maybe the most impressive part was the image processing stuff. You know, that was super important. I, I, like a lot of people, really looked at the cameras on the phones as kind of the number one concern. And um, there's some neat stuff going on there, but it's not, and it's not just for photos, although that's a big part of it. It's also for the, you know, the AI plus image processing for, you know, security and biometrics and all that kind of stuff. This it's, it's really, really impressive. Um, it, it's, yeah, hopefully, yeah. I mean, you need to go watch the presentation. It's, 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 mm -hmm. it's worth seeing. Are, are all of those things Sorry, in 845 going to be um, used by PCs? Uh, they can be. They can be yeah. leveraged. Um, again, if a PC wants to, uh, to, I mean, HP talked about they have a, the first front-facing camera in right. their device that they're launching on 835. They are leveraging our Spectre ISP for that. Yep. Um, and then the future, as we see these devices take on different form factors, foldable, bendable, you know, origami, whatever uh, they might be, uh, I think you'll see leveraging more and more and more of the platform. All the AI stuff and the image processing, again, if you want to put dual cameras, multiple cameras, forward-facing, backward-facing cameras into these devices, absolutely the entire platform can be leveraged. There's no reason why it could not be leveraged. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, interesting. Uh, they actually called out the PC in a few instances uh, today. Well, interesting yeah. question from the chat room. I mean, the, the value proposition really happens when you're mobile, when you're lightweight, when you're on battery. Will yep. we see Snapdragons in desktop computers? Is there even a market uh, for desktops anymore? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'm not right. sure. Um, I, I guess it all comes down to what is the use case, right? Um, what do people want to do and those experiences that are required? And then what's the right form factor for that? And then you know, what is the, what is the underlying architecture that supports that? Um, yeah, desktops obviously are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. From a mainstream PC TAM perspective, uh, there's obviously very, very specific use cases for desktop computing, whether it's creation um, in, in the entertainment world, whether it's AAA gaming, um, those types of things. Um, but uh, I think, I think what, what um, you will see is, at least at first, in this kind of um, goes back to the announcement we made with AMD, um, right. which when Kevin Lensing from AMD came on stage, the murmurs in the audience were, yeah, were not yeah, wasted yeah. on me. I was backstage <laughs> and I, I even heard it. Yep. Um, so it was, a, it was a little bit of a surprise and a little bit of a twist. And we, we expected it to be the case. But, but, but the point that we were making is that, you know, the always connected PC 
um, is a, a, it's a, it's a movement, it's a category and, right. and everybody who, and everybody believes in it, right? Everyone believes that this, this always connected experience is really, um, not just a niche experience for, um, one type of device in the PC ecosystem, but it's really sort of something that has to permeate, um, the PC experience. So with AMD, you know, what we're planning on doing, as you probably saw is their, you know, with their new Ryzen platform, um, as well as their Vega graphics, going into higher end computing, um, whether it's gaming types of devices that are also becoming, you know, more portable, um, all connect, you know, gigabit LTE connectivity could actually be a benefit um, yep. to those experiences as well. And so if you're talking about a 15 watt system, right, uh, where we don't, you know, we don't play in the 15 watt space, right, with our with our integrated platform, we play in the five watt space, right, right? right. Where, where all that battery life and that mobility and that smartphone like experience really is needed. in a in a, you know, a top tier uh, Alienware, pla- you know, mo- mobile gaming or, or gaming PC, whether it's a mo- gaming laptop or whatever, connectivity obviously could be a, a, a nice, be- a nice benefit. And the, say, that's what AMD sees, mm-hmm. I think, as a so, co- as a co-processor. Yeah, it yeah. was as a, as a discrete modem. Discrete modem, right? Yeah. So, discrete. so you will see what you will see with the announcement they made with with AMD is marrying their their 15 watt sort of GPU CPU combination with our discrete Snapdragon modem. Right um, and to to deliver a connected experience for that use case. So it's a gamer who's is just addicted to gaming and wants to be able to game everywhere and and doesn't want to be constricted by a pop, by a Wi-Fi experience. Yeah, right? and it's a particular advantage because a lot of Intel-based systems would have a sure. yeah, a and, and look, well, card mostly, or whatever. Most of you the know. connected PCs today yeah. that are discreetly connected are connected with Qualcomm modems yeah. today. Right, ninety nine percent of the connected oh, really? PCs yeah, today are connected oh, with Qualcomm modems. Um, even if they're x eighty six machines, yeah, um, they're using our discrete modem. Whether they're using our module, um, our M two module, um, but so we, you know we've been doing connected PCs from a discrete perspective for ten years wow. um, with the PC ecosystem.